All right, now to chaos on Capitol Hill, where the House Speaker faces a mutiny of sorts from his fellow Republicans. If it succeeds, it would make, be a make or break day for a number of congressional Republicans who are eager to finally address immigration. The main point of contention is a so-called discharge petition. Don't worry too much about the term. Basically, it's a, a move that would uh, move immigration legislation out of committee and onto the House floor for a real debate and a vote. Such a move could force Speaker Paul Ryan to call a vote on a bill he doesn't like or isn't sure he has got the support for. House Democrats joined about, I mean, kind of all House Democrats, joined about 23 Republican, uh, Republicans in, in Congress using this maneuver to force a vote on four separate immigration proposals. They've almost got enough signatures to pull the trigger, but Speaker Ryan, trying to hold off an assault on his authority and prevent mayhem in the Republican conference, is trying to hold the line. Instead, he's negotiating with the various factions to come up with a unified GOP plan for immigration legislation to introduce sometime later this summer. Now, all of this comes at a time when arrests at the U.S. border with Mexico are on the upswing, topping 50,000 in May for the first uh, for the third straight month. Joining me now is Congressman Mark Amaday, a Republican from Nevada who supports the discharge petition. Congressman, good to see you. Good to see you, Alex. So this is not just a matter of supporting something on the merits. It's the idea that you, like many other members of Congress on both sides of the aisle, are frustrated with the fact that we haven't moved forward on some meaningful immigration legislation. You know what, Ali? Your description of, of the procedural uh, uh, tool that, that the discharge petition is and, and leading into this is pretty darn accurate, and thank you for that. The discharge petition doesn't mean I'm going to vote specifically on any one of those, but it means I want the legislative process, I want a chance to go to Rules Committee and offer amendments, and I want a chance to vote on the floor. And you say, why is that? And it's like, does anybody think the status quo is really working right. regardless of what your politics are? Right, that's right. And, and you and I have had this conversation on other topics in the past, and it's meaningful for you and your constituents to get this done. Now, look, I'm not bothered by the fact that all Republicans are not on the same side on this issue. That is the beauty of uh, our pluralistic uh, Republican uh, uh, democracy. But is there common ground? Is there enough common ground to get something happening? You know what? I don't know. I mean, the Senate tried voting king of the hill. They had, they had what did they call that, a vote-a-thon, and they didn't pass anything. That could be the result in the House, too. But to be prohibited from being recorded as for or against something when you're a legislator is a curious thing. And remember, Allie, the president gave us a March 6th deadline, which is 90 days in the rearview mirror now. So when we talk about what's, what's the magic of continuing to do nothing, you got me. Right. And and so part of the issue is that on some of the issues on immigration, look, there's some on which there's not uh, there's not common agreement amongst Republicans and certainly not agreement with Democrats on the border wall. This is an issue that is very difficult for people to come to terms with. But on the issue of some solution for for these DACA kids, uh, the country is almost of one mind on this. And I think most Republicans want some resolution to this. What does it come down to, that some Republicans are okay with a path to citizenship for these people and some are not? Well, you, you know, when, when you look at that particular issue, you say, well, the president was talking 10 or 12 years, citizenship was at the end, Bob Goodlatte was talking three years, and you had to keep signing up, but it's like, so that's fine. Put something on the floor, and let's see what the amendment process produces, and then let's see what people actually vote for. This bit where we're saying, I don't want to pass, I don't want to bring something unless I know it's going to be signed into law, well, with all due respect, I don't know anybody who's got 100% crystal ball here. Remember when we brought health care to the floor? Yep, yep. Guess what? We took those hard votes and it didn't get into law. So right. are we supposed to shut everything down? No. Right. So that's the process that, that constituents and your constituents in particular want to see. They'd like to see some legislative process. I guess this is the part that frustrates people, that things get stuck in committee and there's these negotiations that go on between Congress and the White House. But, but folks want some kind of movement from members of Congress. Well, it's just my opinion, but let me tell you what, it's pretty tough to defend nothing, okay? Judge me by how I vote. Yep. That's this business. Give me a chance to vote. Setting up this, this, uh, this hurdle that says, I don't know if, it's, if we should do it unless I know it's going to pass is like, well, if we did everything that way, we probably wouldn't even have a country right now. What do you say to those people who describe this? I mean, I did it. I was a bit tongue-in-cheek when I said that uh, Speaker Paul Ryan is holding off a mutiny. This isn't really a mutiny. But it is a challenge to, to, to what he, leadership, thinks is the order of which in which things should be done through committee, through leadership uh, sanction and scheduling of votes. How do you, what do you say to people who say that you're, you're 
you're pushing back on, on your leadership? Well, first of all, when you look at the 23 Republicans that are on that thing, um, there's about 13 of them that have a higher voting percentage with the president than the mm -hmm. speaker. So this isn't a bunch of wild people running around trying to tear things down. Second of all, there's probably general agreement on 80 plus percent of the issues yeah. there. So it's like, are we going to let the perfect be, be the, the competitor to the good? I, I, after this long, you know, the last time we did immigration of any kind, we were listening to cassette decks. Yeah. Some of your viewers don't even know what yeah. cassettes are. It wasn't eight tracks, but it was cassettes. You're absolutely right about that. All right, Congressman, good to talk to you as always. Congressman.